Hello, good morning. Oh, I always say good morning, and it's really not. It is the afternoon. Um, Carla Nicole, um, I am actually on time today. I promised I would be, and I, I made it. I made it on time today. So uh, I want to welcome everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Um, this is Live with Carla Nicole. And anybody that hasn't um, joined my show before, um, I am a single mom of two, and um, my spiritual mission is to encourage people um, how to have quality relationships and um, how we can make our, our lives a lot more refreshing if we change how we look at things, how we feel things are um, going in our lives, we don't always have to be um, stuck in a mindset. We can actually, you know, kind of challenge our minds sometimes and, and think of different ways to um, look at things. Currently, um, you know, I do various different things. I've done parenting resolutions. I've done jealousy resolutions. I've done all different kind of things. Um, but currently, I'm working on um, relationship resolutions. Um, I believe that um, a lot of problems is going on in the dynamic of relationships, and I believe that it's because of the fact that um, there's just a lot of, you know, hard things coming at you when you have a fulfilling relationship. And I think that a lot of times it could just be from, um, you know, social media. It could be from, you know, uh, just outsiders getting, trying to be involved in your relationship. There could be all kinds of things that can cause the relationship to have this tug of war going on. And you really don't even know how you got here or how we're, we're messing up. So um, the reason why I wanted to talk today about relationships is because um, I think it's important. So... A part of relationships is sex. So because of that, um, currently I am kind of touching a little bit about um, giving everybody a sexual understanding. Um, we can't be too close-minded. Um, we also have to understand that sex is a part of life, and it's definitely a part of relationships if you're in a long-term relationship. So um, one of the things that I'm concerned with is um, just there's a lot of hang-ups there's a lot of things that we are taught very young um, women and men about you know um, sexual education and so now um, because of some of those um, some of that teaching has caused a lot of us to be thinking a certain way and in that thinking, a lot of times what's happening is the thinking is causing us to be um, having more problems and more um, headaches in the relationship because there's a new paradigm in town. Um, you know, we had generations upon generations upon generations of understanding. Um, today's woman is not the same woman that was here two generations ago. Today's man is not the same man that was two generations ago. So what I was taught about what men desire or want uh, is not the same today. It's not currently working in the current relationships of today. That thinking that I was taught or that I noticed or that I realized is just not applicable anymore. So we need to kind of tweak and learn what is it that really applies to today's relationships. We're not really sure because we got a lot going on with other factors that come into relationships. It's not just like, okay, um, I'm in love, so he's going to marry me. It's not in that It's not in that scope anymore. Things are different. Men are different. Women are different. Things have changed a lot. So now we have to learn how do we get into this situation or situationship or relationship or um, marriage and be completely and totally clueless as to what is working and what is not working. So because I've had relationships in the past, you know, I've noticed that some things are different with the way we think about sexual activity. How we think about sex has a lot to do with how the relationship grows and prospers in that department. 
Now, um, I want to talk today about crude versus inexperienced. Some people believe that if a woman or uh, or a in a relationship someone is prude, they uh, that what prude basically is is the woman is not open to ex to sexual exploration, and so because of that you have this hindrance of how in the world or am I going to feel fulfilled in my intimacy if I don't have a person open to exploration sexually. So the the problem is we're not talking about this before we get in the relationship. So you're in a relationship with someone and they really don't um, have the knowledge per se about what you like or maybe didn't even have the um, the partners previously to you to even know some of the things you know. So again, we're talking about sex taste. Now sex taste and prude, is it really goes hand in hand. You wanna make sure that you have this conversation about what is it that I like, and that I desire, and that I want to fulfill myself in, in, in intimacy, and what is it that my partner or my lover or my spouse or my boyfriend wants as well. Nobody's talking about that at the table. They're talking about it, you know, to the girlfriends or the guys are, and I don't even think guys would talk about it, but girlfriends we talk about, oh yeah, we were doing this, we were doing that, and this is great, and that's great, but the, your partner don't know none of that. <laughs> it's like, why don't you talk to your dude about what it is that's fulfilling in your mind of what you desire? But a lot of times we don't have that conversation. So I want to give you guys a heads up. Prude means the person just is not open to exploration. And you need to know that for a long-term relationship. Because for some relationships, the glue in the relationship is the sexual part of the relationship, is the intimacy. And so sometimes you may be aggravated with each other, you may be, you know, going through some changes, or, and that may be the glue that keeps your relationship strong and healthy. So if you're not having the conversation about are you open to being explorative or not, if they are or not, that needs to be decided between you and, that and your partner because a lot of times we're not talking about what we're open to do. And are we willing to be, you know, kind of, I believe we have to be honest with each other. First of all, we have to be honest with ourselves about what is it we like. Do we like certain things in the bedroom or are we not really down with certain things? We need to talk about those things, those certain acts that we're not okay with. We need to be clear. We need to be open. And we need to also understand that when you're in a relationship or whatever type of arrangement you're in, you need to be clear about what it is you um, can really um, do without having, without having the um, inhibitions. Now here's the thing, when you are prude, and this is, the, this is the problem with being prude, when you're prude and you're not willing to be open to exploration, what happens is your partner may be unfulfilled. If your partner becomes unfulfilled, what that does is that gives, you, that gives your relationship a gap of what? Opportunity for someone else to take interest in them and or they take interest in, in, the, in another person. And then what happens is it can craft up an opportunity now to, you know, venture off into some, and, and to get into, get into a relationship or get into, you know, um, a uh, sexual, ex sexual uh, relationship with them on top of being with you because they don't feel like you guys are connecting. So why I say it's so important we discuss it is because you need to know how is it we can do this and not have a problem with what you want and what he wants or what she wants and what he, he you know you want. You got to be clear. You got to be clear when it comes to this. Another thing that's very important: inexperience. I talk about this often. If you as a woman didn't have a lot of partners or you didn't have a lot of experience in the sexual department, you want to be open and honest. Or if you're a virgin, let me just take that there too. 
if you didn't have a lot of partners or you didn't have a lot of experiences sexually, you need to be, um, first of all, you need to understand that just because you're inexperienced does not necessarily mean you're prude. That's not true. You can be a virgin or someone that's inexperienced and open to seeking exploration. Because a lot of times people think, well, if I am um, only have one partner or never had a partner at all, people automatically assume that I'm uh, prude. And that's not necessarily the case. My strongest suggestion for those that are inexperienced to please consider, please, please, please consider um, learning, studying, understanding, just like we get told when we're young. Practice makes perfect. So that applies okay. to this, this as well. This right here. So Post-dark. be understanding okay. that you and your partner have to get aware of the fact that both of you have this ambiance together. So when you're in the intimacy with each other, understand that every time you do it, you get better at it if you both are open to understanding each other. But if you're not having conversation about what it is you like, what it is he likes, and you're just doing things and you're just like like hitting a dart without <laughs> knowing where the target's at, then it's not gonna be fulfilling okay. on either side. Day, okay? So I, I really want you guys to understand that inexperienced does not mean that the person's proved. Now, here's the thing that I want the gents to get, because a lot of gentlemen don't know this. Some women, because I've had, I had a conversation recently with a, with a woman that was a virgin, and she was telling me that as soon as she tells a dude, like, you know, I'm a virgin, I've never had a partner, the dudes, boom, they're flung, they're gone. Like they or they don't continue to have the intrigue with her because they found out that she's a virgin. And I said, well, you know, maybe it's a liability. I think sometimes gentlemen think that, well, if she's never had it, you know, and I and her become intimate, she's going to think have high expectations that we're going to get married or. Or she's going to have this attachment to me. I can't get rid of her. And all kinds of stuff. But there is a, a an on there is an actual there is an actual stigma for women that are virgins. And I was like, wow, I didn't know this. So I told her, I said, well, I'm going to put it out there. I want the gentleman to know that just because a woman's a virgin doesn't necessarily mean she's approved. Because with the one, the virgin that I talked to, she was telling me, she's like, I'm not necessarily waiting for marriage. I'm just waiting for, for it to be a, you know, a very intimate relationship, something that, you know, we're in, in pretty much a commitment. And I'm open to, you know, being intimate with him. It's just, it's just that I'm not just going to pass it on and give it just to anybody. And I told her I could respect that. I said, but you know, a lot of times, that's not the case. I said, that's why men have this, they flee, they're gone. When they find out you're a virgin, are like, oh no, I got that to do. I am not the one, I gotta bounce because I can't be with you. So I'm learning now, like, nah, that's not necessarily the case. We can actually have an intimate relationship with someone without actually going the whole mile. But I told her, I said, understand this, you want to educate yourself. Educate yourself about yourself. And I think that it's important for virgins to get this. You want to know um, how often you're going to desire um, being intimate because this is important. If you don't know, you and your partner don't know how often you want to be intimate it's going to be a challenge over time especially in the long term because people's um, diet i call it the sex drive their drive if they have a, a drive that's a lot more what i would say a lot more hungry versus someone that isn't as isn't as much it's a little more you know hey i like it but i don't need it every day i like it but maybe once a week or i like it once a month or whatever you need to know that. And the best way, the best way for a virgin or a woman that's inexperienced can know that is how often are you masturbating? How often are you desiring to masturbate? That is the way to find out if in fact your drives with the person you're with is going to correlate and balance each other. Because there has to be a balance in relationships. If there's not a sexual understanding where they both are balancing each other out, then it's going to always be a conflict going on between you and him. 
Or, like I talked about before, there's going to be an open opportunity, a gap there where now, ooh, I can, I can go ahead and have someone else to supplement what my girl isn't giving me or supplement what my dude isn't giving me because I have a desire to be intimate more often than than not so i want you guys to understand that i'm giving you guys this information because for relationships that everyone so desires to have it is vitally important that we discuss what it is we need in that relationship and that definitely has to do with sexual activity if we're not open and honest about what we need and what we want it can cause all kinds of friction all kinds of headache all kinds of aggravation and it's unwanted and unwarranted if you can be clear in in, in the wrong run. Um, so hey sis, we got Miss Carla over here. We got Tripon. Hey, what's up Perry? All, all my Ed, Edward and Granville, so glad to see you guys are here. Um, so I want to talk about what Carla says. So she said that a lot of women don't take the opportunity to learn themselves because they aren't taught at a young age what they like or desire, and, and which matters. And this is such a good topic here. Thank you, sis. And hi, Tripon. I'm glad you're watching. So I, I love what you said here, Carla, because this is very important. You know, um, sexuality really isn't discussed with daughters. Um, now, the beautiful thing about me is I had a mom that was really against, well, I would call her very, just um, gave me essential things about sexuality early on. I think I was about maybe 11, and she gave me a book called What's Happening to Me. That book, um, I ended up passing to my daughter. What I think is important is... Uh, Carla is so right about saying we are not discussing with our kids or our children about sexuality. You have to have your own personal self-exploration as well. That includes studying, learning, understanding yourself, and not being shameful or being, you know, kind of... Um, reserved about your desires it is okay to be um, you know wanting to get a little naughty with your boyfriend or desiring to be with someone it is okay it's not you know what I'm saying it's not like it's a bad thing because you desire sex the problem is a lot of times we're not really conversating with our children or with um, ourselves or even being honest with ourselves about what, what it is we need so it's important that we talk about this another thing about being prude is we have to be um, we have to understand something and this is really important back in the day um, it was looked down upon it used to be like around my age I think I was probably about maybe 11 12 any little girl that would, you know, sway her hips or look or dance kind of, you know, suggestively or anything like that, that little girl was stigma. It was a stigma stamped on her. That girl, that little girl is fast. You know, she's she's too wild or you out here doing this and doing that. And it would be this whole shutdown about young girls um, being flirtatious or being... Um, you know, um, suggestive. It was always looked down upon. Like, that's not okay. You don't flirt with people. You don't do this. You don't do that. You you don't show skin and all this other stuff. And you, as you get older, you learn, like, man, it's better to just be who you are. And, and even being friendly. I found out that being too friendly is considered suggestive or is considered to be, you know, too um, flirtatious. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We should be able to be who we are. And if we can't talk about sexual activity, if we can't talk about who we are as as a person or as a as a uh, as a human being having desires, then why are we always having all these hang-ups sexually? But then when you turn around and you look at how many people spend countless hours trying to find out about someone's sex life, that doesn't make any sense to me. How is that? How is it that you have so many hangups about sexual activity, but then more people are curious about who's sleeping with who? 
So obviously, it's something going on with the stigma in the mind. We have to get past that. We have to learn that um, it is a part of life. Um, we can sit around and act like it's not, but it is. It was God-given. It is a gift. Understand, it's going to take practice to understand, ooh, how am I going to become a better lover? How am I going to become a lover? Because not everybody having sex are lovers. Some people are just laying there. Like, they just don't, they, they believe that they're giving the gift of sex to their mate so he can get, hurry up and get up. Because she just doesn't want to act like she's present. I'm not present here. I'm just doing this for him cause, so he can be happy or whatever. But I'm not really present in the act of sex. So I'm just laying here. And so you're like, really? What is up with that? That's not, that's not fulfilling. Well, I'm not. I'm just giving it to him. Sex is not a gift. Sex is an exchange. You're there too. You want to enjoy with each other so you both can be fulfilled. This is not about just him. And I see more and more women, they don't want to own it, but they're really not wanting to, they're really not wanting to um, speak upon what it is they really want or what, what it is they really need. So they just lay there and they don't really want to enjoy it. They just, you know, they're like, well, I'm here, but I really don't enjoy it. But why is that? Are you doing any studying to learn what it is with the female anatomy that can help you to get to a higher enjoyment within your sexual activity with your mate? How do you lay there all this time and not really enjoy the intimacy? I'm confused. <laughs> it's like, I don't get it. How do you do that? So it's important that we see how important it is to be open and honest. Understand that being crude is not a bad thing, but it can cause many problems in the long run for a long-term relationship. Because if you're not, um, if you're not open to exploration sexually, what can happen is a lot of people can end up um, just finding themselves just not even interested anymore, even trying to get to that next level. So they just say, well, it is what it is, and I'm just going to just let it be what it is and just not care anymore. And then when you stop touching each other, hugging, hugging each other, kissing each other, loving each other, it becomes this disconnection. And unfortunately, sex is connecting the two of you. So if you don't have that connection with each other, what happens is you start to fade as far as the intimacy. It starts to fade apart. And you just don't know what happened. I just don't feel close to you. Or I don't feel you anymore. I don't feel, you know, that you really, really love me. Or I can't, I can't put my, my, my words to it. But I just don't really understand if you love me or not. Well, sex is an expression. So in the act of sex, how you perform within the relationship with each other also is expressing to your mate how you feel. So that is the physical act of how you're supposed to be expressing your feelings to them. I'm hoping this is helping you. This is just, you know, a part of why I do what I do. It's based upon learning each other sexually, learning how um, to explore each other without inhibitions. The less inhibitions you have, the more fulfilling the sexual relationship will become. Because if you allow yourself... If you allow yourself to be more, um, you know, have more fun and enjoy and, and not get hung up on, on little things and get open to trying something new, you'll find that the relationship gets more and more and more fulfilling. So, you know, again, it's so important that we don't get caught up in, um, we don't get caught up in the, you know, the realm of I'm bored to death. I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm here. Be, be present in your relationship. Be present in your sexuality. Because if you're not present and you're just doing it just because you feel like it's something, a chore, you're not going to be fulfilled in the long run. So this way I'm trying to give you the ways to which you can enjoy it, be fulfilled in it, and learn each other based upon how you feel. Thanks. Thanks, Bo, for saying it's awesome. I appreciate that. Tripon, you said it would be better if there is a written explanation of your speaking. I do have it written. Matter of fact, I just wrote about 
um, the version of today, go to my page and you will find this in the written form. I also have a blog on WordPress. Please, by all means, join my WordPress. It's called In The Know. So it's N-T-H-E-K-N-O-W. And you can find all of my stuff that I talk about here. I do write it. I also have a whole um, show live with Carla Nicole group where you can go and watch all of these videos. Go down each and every one to your leisure. At, if you want to be a part of the group, please you know, send your acceptance and I will definitely allow you on the group. And that way you can watch these you know, when you, when you actually get a chance. I know everybody's so busy. So, you know, again, I hope absolutely Tripon anytime. This is why I do what I do. Because some people like it visually, some, some people like to read. So either way, I try to give it to you in different, in different facets so you guys are able to pick up um, what you can do to enhance your sexuality. Sex is a beautiful thing. We cannot get all caught up in all the inhibitions and, and people's judgment of it. Just understand that you have to be fulfilled. You have to be completely and totally present in it. And you'll find that it's much more fulfilling than you can ever imagine. So, hey, I'm done here. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are here. We're able to see me and, and hang out with me for 30 minutes. Um, I appreciate that. So, again, uh, if you need anything, please reach out to me. Carla Nicole, signing off. Best kept. Have a good day.